this government is going down and that is because it's I, 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 yesterday I did not say it is taken over or polluted by plutocrats no if it were plutocrats it would be better but this government and you can quote me on that is now run by kakistocrats look somebody has to do this I'm 64 years old I thank God for everything and I think what is left to me as a politician or expected of me is to speak out the truth to whoever he is. Mm. <clears throat> now we have a big challenge and that is the threat of hunger and food scarcity. It is not only that the prices or inflation has gone up to 40%, but it has gotten in some places where you can you do you don't you will not with your money you won't find the food or the items you want to buy that is very very dangerous and nigeria has never been included in the countries that face severe food crisis or yes. food insecurity but this time around check the figures recently you know published by un world food program action against hunger um kade harmonize they rank nigeria as one of the hot spot and for people like me i have to be scared as i told you i'm 64 years old with 10 children and 20 grandchildren i don't have passport or visa to anywhere i don't have you have more than one visa passport <laughs> i know but what I do you mean I have multiple? I know you we're stay not in London. About me. We're talking about you. You stay in Nigeria, you stay in London, and you can go to London tomorrow morning. I cannot do that because I don't have visa to anywhere. The chief whip of the Senate, Senator Andy Ndume, has cried out on uh, Arise News. He said he don't have two passports to run out of Nigeria, that Nigeria is going down. He cried out because of the state of the nation, hinting that the citizens of Nigeria are tired that they may carry out a revolution. But that is not my problem. My problem is, if a senator, a chief whip, an APC senator, a chief whip is a senior ranking senator of the Open Legislative Assembly, will come out to make some statements, even talking about two passports in case of necessity, he will use it to run out. What is the fate of ordinary citizen? What is the fate of the poor masses? What is the fate of those who don't even have ordinary passport? Talk less of to talk about other countries' passports. That is to tell you the situation and where Nigeria is at this current point. However, Aerofi's son attacks Tinumbu, says president will serve only one term. Balshe Aerofi, the outspoken son of the former Karuna state governor, Nasser Aerofi, has attacked President Bonda Tinumbu and his father's successor, Governor Obasani, predicting that both will be voted out of office in 2027 for non-air performance. Even though every Nigerian know that Tinumbu is not trying, it's not Erofai's son that's supposed to say it. Because even his father is under probe because of the corrupt cases during his administration. So I think this man is not in the position to say what he's saying. But as I said, and I'm on TV, I, I speak straight. If Indeed. Yeah, if, if there's anybody that will, you know, say what I'm saying is not true, can come up tomorrow and talk to Charles. This government is going down, and that is because it's. I, 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 yesterday, I did not say it is taken over or polluted by plutocrats. No. If it were plutocrats, it would be better. But this government, and you can quote me on that, is now run by kakistocrats. And that's very, very Explain. dangerous. Explain. Kakistocrats? I have it here. You can check the definition. It's a government run by worst, least qualified, and most un unscrupulous citizens. I'm not the first one that says. Right. What I'm hoping now is that he will look in, look out, and get. I don't believe, again, I say, that he is in the real picture of his, what is happening out there. People are angry. You can't imagine the number of calls I received today, including yourself. I called you very early in the morning. <laughs> yeah. But what were you saying? Hey, you are yourself again because you say it as it is and you come. Look, somebody has to do this. I'm 64 years old. I thank God for everything. And I think what is left to me as a politician or expected of me is to speak out the truth to whoever he is. Mm. <clears throat> now we have a big challenge. And that is the threat of hunger and food scarcity. It is not only that the prices 
or inflation has gone up to 40 percent but it has gotten in some places where you can you do you don't you will not with your money you won't find the food or the items you want to buy that is very very dangerous and nigeria has never been included in the countries that face severe food crisis or yes. food insecurity but this time around check the figures recently you know published by un world food program action against hunger um kade harmonize they rank nigeria as one of the hot spot and for people like me i have to be scared as i told you i'm 64 years old with 10 children and 20 grandchildren i don't have passport or visa to anywhere I don't have, you have more than one visa, uh, passport, I know. But <laughs> what I do you mean I have more than one? I know, you we're stay in London. We're not talking about me, we're talking about you. You stay in Nigeria, you stay in London, and you can go to London tomorrow morning. I cannot do that, because I don't have visa to anywhere. Yeah, but I'm sure you wouldn't have too much of a challenge getting a visa. No, you have to get, you have to apply. No. But, but let's, let's so, so, focus, so yeah. So, this is a very serious and scary situation, and most importantly, in the why I'm so scared, is if those in power do not allow the president to know the magnitude or get informed about it so that they do something mm. then you get worried it's like now charles we are here and the cloud is gathering and i say charles it's going to rain you say oh, no don't worry then <laughs> that is scary mm. if you know the president before now then you know that the whole scenario has changed this is somebody who stays in Lagos. If you go to Bodyland anytime, any day, anytime in the night, you can go to Bodyland two o'clock. And in most cases, you find President Bola Ahmed Tunubu, you know, receiving people in and out. Mm. If you come to where he stays in Abuja here, Lagos, in the Lagos house, you will know from when you take a turn, whether he's in town or not, any time of the day. There are times you can go there three in the night and you meet him there. But now, if you go to Villa, the front of Villa, it's like a graveyard. Truth. The only thing, you know, um, the, you, the news media put certain things not exactly the way. Mm. So now that I'm talking to you, hear it from the horses. Absolutely. Mouth. In every government, it's like that. You have the gatekeepers. Those who want the president to know everything and to have other opinions would even encourage to get the, those that matter mm. in the government to come over because, oh, during Buhari's uh, administration, which I thought was not that good, but if you compare this now to Buhari's regime, you will give Buhari a thumbs up. Because, well, so, some would say that would be rather difficult to do. <laughs> you know, because at least he opens up, people come to see him. I'm cutting, you cut me, and if, they, if, if it's not true, I don't speak just like that. Right. There are some ministers don't have access to Mr. President. The only access they have to Mr. President is when they are maybe invited, and some may not be invited, or when they go for council meeting. And you know, when they go for council, by the time the president goes in, all of them are seated. Mm. And the president is the first person to leave. You can't say oh i want to no yeah. that is it there is a procedure and then the sgf who is supposed to be the clearing house i don't know about man you know, i've not seen him uh, most lately but i'm telling you charles i won't come to the tv or even sure. in private lie so have you had a challenge in seeing the president yourself personally well let me tell you one thing the president severally if we meet in the public he will say ah chief Ndume, why are you not coming why am i and i said no Mr. President, when you look for me, I'll be there. He just said to him, well, he's not allowing me to come in. I said it once to one <laughs> right. of his staff <laughs> that they are the people that are keeping us out of this place. And so I will not struggle to come and see Mr. President. But I have an obligation mm. to speak for the people or speak for my people or speak as a senator. You can imagine I am the chief whip. If a chief whip cannot have access to Mr. President, the new senators, of course. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, let me tell you. And let me tell you in difference to it. Obasan just started during his government. In 24 hours, if any senator wants to see him, 
nobody will ask him what do you want to see the president for he makes sure that within 24 hours any senator has access to him ministers go in and out to know, uh, um, uh, Obasanjo as old is he was older than our president he will be saying well, that is politics you talk to the people hear from the people but now to me it seems besides shielding mr president they give they always give him assurance that everything is out there is all right out there and that is not the case so but if nothing right. is being done then there can be crisis and your sense is that nothing is being done at tangibly the right and the other thing is as i said in i will still say what mm. the the president is caged in there let me use that word again and there are no people speaking out or doing anything for the Nigerians to see visibly and make, you know, <coughs> appreciate the effort of the government. Mm. For example, now we are faced with climate change palaver. The rain, for, the rain, uh, see, rainy season in most, uh, especially in the north and other elsewhere, is hazy. But nobody is telling people what needs to be done and what the government is doing nobody is talking to the people that is a problem that is my concern as i said yeah well some would argue that that's not entirely fair because you've got the um the agencies i mean that, Which are, agencies? that, that, that are in charge well the, the national emergency management agency you've got the ministry of environment you've got he's just appointed somebody and who used to be his spokesman i, I think as i in gilali as a kind of special climate um envoy i mean so they they they, they, they they're not unaware of what is going on and, and i'm not their spokesman i'm just saying that they're not unaware of what is going on. And every time that there's a lot of talk and alerts are put out about the potential for flooding and so on and so forth. Um, so they do try to draw the attention of people to things. But what I wanted to ask you is that looking at the things that you've pointed out and the way things are going at the moment with the economy and with the fiscal situation in this country the people as you said clearly feeling the pinch of it as inflation goes through the roof do you believe we're going to see real growth in this country anytime soon yeah it's possible because nigeria is so blessed with natural and human resources but no matter how blessed you are and how much you have to harness those yeah, resources that is the problem now, yeah. and that's why we are calling on the president to harness those resources. Absolutely. And if for you to do that, you must have people out there that know Nigeria in the first place. So he needs to engage more. Basically. He needs to no, he needs to get the right people into the office and he needs to be a democrat. I allay notice this is not allegation. I said this government is dominated by Kaki <laughs> And kleptocrats. Yeah, he needs to dominate his government. But that's with, always been the, the no, story no, no, no. of Nigerian governments, he though, needs, hasn't it? He needs to dominate his government with Democrats. Right.